Hi guys, uh, job today is fitting some down lights. Been a manic day, this is the third job of the day. Uh, got a nicely decorated bathroom. I'm gonna add some nice little down lights to it. So what we're doing, removing that light fitting, which is quite a nice light fitting anyway. And we're putting down lights, gonna put one middle of the shower, uh, one there, this is, so one middle of the shower, one there, and then over here above the bath, gonna have four, one, two, three, four. We did think about just having four in total, but the width of the room, or the length of the room, sorry, it's just a little bit too long, so we're gonna have six. We're going with our trusted old Collingwood H2s, love them, and brush chrome bezel. Just to give you an idea of how long this takes as well, time now is quarter past two. So we're running a bit late. It's going to be dark by the time we finish, I reckon. Uh, stand you up there. As always, on a downlight installation, I always have a little sketch to start. Start with, to know what we're working with. So you've got your shower there. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll get room measurements work out exactly where we want our down lights. Going across we've got 187. We have two, five, six. As you can see, we've got one, eight, seven across, two, five, six long. And what we need to do is work out where this one it goes, because that's going to go centre of the cubicle, and that one has to sort of stay. That's where we're going to get measure measurements from. So let's measure the cubicle. So we're going to take it to the edge of the tiles. For our square. And that's 81. 76, no way. So what we've got here, cubicle is 81 by 76 there. 81, 76. We're gonna measure exactly where we need to put our down like right there. So we've got 81 divided by two. 40.5, so that, that bit there is 40.5, uh, 76, 76 divided by 2 is 38, so that is 38, that gap there. So now we have our first position, our first down light. And we'll just mirror it with this one up here. So that will be 40.5 from the wall there. And then 38 there. And then with that, we'll mirror this one. That's going to be 38. And then that's going to be 38. And then that's going to be 40.5 all the way along, 40.5, and that's going to be 40.5 all the way along. That's ideal, but as you'll see, we're going to have things like joists in the way, so that's probably not going to work. So let's see how we go. And then with this, with this one, we'll just take a middle reading between them two points. So it's two, five, six. So that will be one, one, two, eight, is that? So two, five, six divided by two equals one, two, eight. Good, nice one. One, two, eight 
to the middle there. One, two, eight, there, and there. And that is how we're going to do it. But as you'll see, joists are going to get in the way. Let's start marking them up. That's the first bit out of the way. As you can see, we've got little marks all around the walls. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our laser out and join up these marks. All around there. See, there, there. We're just getting literally just drawing them all up. We've got, we've got the door. That's model number DW88. Looks like that. This one everyone uses. Perfect. Okay. Let's get them on. Let's see what he looks like. There we go. We've got a laser on their marks all the way along. Now just to mark up. Mark up roughly where that line crosses. So you know it's going to be there. For this, but I always have seems like a nightmare trying to line these these two lines up. So let's get one more. tell me why it's flashing as with anything, anything else don't want to read the instructions do they so that is so now we're going to do it the other way that's our last line so do a line there we know that that Going to be our first down like that cross. X marks the spot. Then we do the same the other way. And X marks the spot. Same this line. X marks the spot. And there. Yeah. Green one's quite good because you get quite a good um, light in there, even though it's quite bright as in the ambient light, it's still quite, um, it still shows up, that's what I meant to say. Never look into the laser. Mm -hmm. Is it rave, Dave? Right now we've got our holes marked up. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Time for some pilot holes. See if we've got anything in the way in joists or anything. I'm going to do our pilot holes. Let's see what we come across.
Looks like first hole with a hit of joist, which is great. So what it looks like is two over there seem to hit joist straight away. That's why you drill the pilot hole rather than going straight in with a hole saw. So you just need to move that probably a bit further that way just to miss the joist. A little trick that I do now, that's the size of a hole saw. Get it with a cut of cable and what you want to do is you want to you want to get the um, radius, yeah the radius is the right word of the cable like so so that's the radius of the cable so you see that will pretty much match up with the size the edge of the hole saw and this is what we do with it plug them in the hole and twist them around that way you can feel if there's any joists or anything in the way without making a massive hole that's going around nicely so we know there's no joists in the way same here Make sure you get them up nicely, spin them around. Now that's stuck now. So there's, I just felt a joist there, so that's not good. I need to move this one as well. This joist just to the left. So there's joists just about there, which is not good. Check this one. Spin it round. See, that's going round lovely. You know there's nothing in the way. Next one. Very rare you get a full hour swear. You're perfect on everyone. Perfect. Don't worry about these marks here and on the wall. I'll show you a trick how to get them off afterwards. Last one. Yep, and he's good as well. Spinning all the way around, see? So, yeah, we just need to move them to over there. Perfect to the wall. Final test what you end up getting, you're going to get a few holes like that. You can patch them up. It's much easier to patch up a little hole like that than. Um, Big old, um, what do you call it? Big old hole. Yeah, and it goes around lovely. This should be the same. Yeah, these round lovely. And it's not the per perfect dimensions from the walls, etc. But you can only work with the joists. You can't go for a joist that is not good. Into a hole. Make sure you get the right one. Daily on. And hold it there for a couple of seconds. Let the dust settle. Then put it out. Nice little hole. And yeah, we can feel the joists right there. So we could move. Next one on the other side. Joyce is right there. That's that Joyce is a bit further on, over that one. That's why I was hitting that one more. Oh, I think I can feel a nice little gap through there. Isn't it? means a perfect cable run. Oh, 
I've done that before and been met with a load of tonne of water coming down. Funny enough, the guy I've done it to now works for me. <laughs> My apprentice had them. But you can't see through the ceilings really. What you can do is what you, you can do. Six nice holes ready for the down lights. This is the hard bit, I'm trying to get the cable from one to the other. We do have ferret cam, but as always, I think I've forgotten to charge it up and it's dead. So that's not very good, is it? Just run that way. So as long as we can get from front to back, we're laughing. See what we can do first with a couple of rods. So we can get them through. Looks like we've got three, three joists there, one there, one middle, one there. Might be able to get through where the light fitting goes. Yeah, so let's see. That's only got two joists in the way. method we're going to use to get through is what we like to call the magnet and chain. Chain one end, magnet on the other, go from different sides and we get them to meet, then pull the cable through like that. Doesn't always work, but let's give it a go. Hopefully this will work. And it's the old fashioned method of phone in the hole. pipe or something in the way but there's a nice little hole in the eye joist about here and see if we can go through that one Until you can hear them connecting. We've got to try and get those two rods to meet up in the middle. Just 
Take this down first. So we've performed table isolation, we locked off the circuit. Now time to remove the light fitting. That's detail. Even though it's checked this off, I've done the safe isolation, I will do a final check with this just to make sure and we're still dead so it's all, all good. Don't use that as the only means of checking your supply, not good. doesn't say but we've probably got an IP44 type thing and no grommet or any protection on the back of the light fitting. So we can put a Wago box in. Oh, 
to put his holes all the way down there. No holes this side. Typical, isn't it? this hole here to see and we've got another hole just here two rods and we can keep putting them until we <coughs> until we get into meat oh, I thought I had it then I thought I had it Touches. I don't know why I'm not. the other side wobbling. So why are they not meeting up? Right. We've got it. Definitely, 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 definitely. This is the bit we all love when you've got cables for each hole. Blah 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 blah
which we need to make for our main supply in anyway. And one there just to get through that joist there. Apart from that, all good. Quite an easy um, install this one. By no means the easiest, and by no means the worst. Um, yeah, as they go, that's not too bad, good. Now I'm going to show you how we fit these down lights. Pull it through, pull the out a stick, pull the out through, cut the back, trim it down a bit. Don't have a lot of room in these. Must have fitted thousands of these by now. I do these in my sleep. And same on the other side. So you got your in, you got your out. Try and keep these about the same length. Makes it easier for you to install them. Tip for you learners, put the CPC facing upwards, then you're not going to lose your sleeve. Keep your little box handy, put the rough cuts in, save your tighten up afterwards. Take the back off with a little screwdriver, pop him out, put that safe. Take off the cable grip. What I'll do is I'll take off one side only. So that's like that, you put your cables in like that. Beautiful. Anyway, L-E-N-N-E-L, what we call Leno. So you top, put in the right place. close together. Actually that's too long. I made these conductors too long because you don't want to be able to see the conductor outside of the enclosure. It's not good because that is only basic insulation and you're not allowed to see basic insulation. I suppose if it's in the seat anyway so it's not, you can't get access to it. But the thing is you don't need at all. So that's probably a, well, anyway, it's good practice not to show it anyway. And then you can play with regs as well. Try that one again. And last time I'd done downloads, was that Shane Walk in the store? Oh no, yeah it was. I was gonna say, I'd have done them, but no, I've done them. Get me in position, press the thumb, and it should all click in place like that. Do your tug test, all your conductors. Yep, and we're all in there. It's a class 2 item, doesn't need enough or CPC in it, but you carry your CPC through for uh, your testing and continuity. Cut off a little bit from that one as well. Not much.
One thing I would say is if Colin would be, would um, do a little more room in these. Same with the back of that. Line up. Anyhow, push down with your thumb. Give it a little tug test. And just try the individual cores, yep. Good. I'm not going to show you doing all six of these because you'll be bored and you'll be unsubscribing or unprescribing. Sad. But you remember it, don't you? So we've got the cord grip on. As you can see, the cord grip is on the actual cord and not on the installation, insulation. It's on, it's on the, what we call sheath grey stuff. Put that on and now you can see can't see any conductors on the outside. So get getting ready to scrub. Hold your, your wings back. And do this the other way around. It should snap in place. There we go. In front of these you've got different settings, you've got warm white, neutral white and cool white. Customer wants cool white, which is on that one, about, about 6000k. So we'll um, leave it on that and then if the customer wants to change it we'll show them how to save calling me out. Last thing, get your bezel, two little grooves, two little lugs to fit in. In like that, tiny little twist round, and there you have it. One down like Do that times six, and we're home time. Oh, it's getting dark. So there's a reason I haven't got light on. Uh, so just to finish the lights, can switch them on, see what you think. Where's my, where's my? It's me, and there we go. So, Four, four over there, one over there, and one over there. I need two holes to patch up that hole and that hole where the main feed was to patch up. I just need to patch up where the main feed went into the light and then just get rid of all these, lock these bits on the wall and patch up the holes where we made our, our pilot holes. That's it pretty much. I'll show you how I do them courtesy of Chris CJR. Guess what idiot? Went down to the van but forgot the impact driver. Never mind. Got the second best thing. Drop. Put it on the slow setting. What we do with these, got a bit of wood about six inches long. What I like to do is mark out the middle. I'll show you why. Stick them in the hole. You can see where your mark is, so you know that's the middle. Get your impact driver. One side, same on the other side. This side of screws just inside. Tidy up, tidy up any edges you've got overhanging. Grab your little disc that you cut out earlier. Again, get inside the screws just inside. And 
and that's how it should look. Nice and flush. Screws are in enough so you can't catch them. Once you put some um, filler in that, you won't even know it's there. Perfect. So this is how we get rid of the, all the lines on, on the side, marker lines that we had to do. We need to get rid of them all. This is how we do it. Holy magic sponge. Put in some water, luckily. Tom's filled up the bath of water, so we can just wet that. Get it nice and wet, nice and clean. Shake them out, just so it's a little bit damp. All we do then, got a mark there, little rub with a magic sponge. There you go, it's gone. You can see the mark there. Bigger mark, let's see if it works on this one. It's a light little rub, not too much. And there you go, that's gone. Got our filler ready. You see this, it's like, um, that's consistency, I don't know what you call it, but, you know, probably a little bit too hard, but that's gonna go off quicker, better for the customer. What I use is these inserts that come with a um, plastic bucket, so if you clean the bucket every time, just throw that away. Best way to do this is you've got two knives. Got your filling knife, knife, and your straight in knife, so you run that over afterwards. Get plenty, ready to go, about that much. Just pack out the holes, holding the bucket underneath for any spillages. It's just packing out the hold for now. Make sure you're getting it in. Once you're happy you've got it all in. Get your other scraper. Another good tip is to make sure you've got a clean blade. This is not as clean. So you can see some scratch marks. I'm gonna have to clean it now. Again, we go back with a bit more filling. Get plenty on there. Another good tip is wet the blade. You can see that's come out quite well. And then the final bit, just needs to paint over that. Probably gonna need another sand, possibly another fill. And that should be good to go. Yeah, yeah, gonna need a sand and another fill. I'll need the customer to do it. Therapies do that. So all in all, job done, just packing up now. So we started at quarter past two, it's now Quarter past five, not too bad. So installing six down lights in the kitchen, so three hours, about right. It's a good time, really. Don't know if you can do it any quicker, but I think that was all right. Hello. Oh, there I am. Oh, that's better. A bit of light now. All right, we're done for the day. Uh, nice little uh, few jobs today. Been a very, very busy day. The rest of the week are pretty much filled up with ICRs. Uh, we'll see if we can get you some photos of that. Here's my uh, Tesco jacket. I'm, I'm trying to overtake Dave Savory with all his McDonald's gear. Um, anyway, as I said, yeah, it is now just gone six. That is a very late day. That's us done. Gonna get home. What's that on show, Adam? Adam Adam Where's Adam? I must have a day off today So that's all done for the day Catch up with us Make sure you, you prescribe Because we've got loads of watches But no one is prescribing yet So I'm going to head it off with a regular saying 
like, comment, share, prescribe.